Hi folks, this is Mr. Scheidler. We're going to go over the 20s today. Um, the first thing I'd like you to do is to find your cover to your unit pack. Uh, we have all the rules on there. Um, so we're going to have rules for assigning oxidation numbers on your cover. We're also going to have rules for balancing redox reactions, which is what we're going to do today. The rules are also um, above the two problems that are at the bottom of the 20s. That you can follow those along as well. Um, I just want to make sure that you are aware of the rules. So there are some rules that are on the cover and at the top of the 20s. Here are some rules that are on the 20s and on your cover as well. So we're going to go through those rules as we solve this next problem. So with this problem, the first thing it says is that we should write the oxidation numbers above each of the elements. So pause this, go ahead and write the oxidation numbers, and then see if you are correct. So we got a zero there, each oxygen is a two negative, but there's three of those oxygens, so that's a six negative. The whole thing has to add up to one negative. That's where that comes from right there. One negative. So the nitrogen must be a five positive. Copper's a two positive. Oxygen's a two negative. Nitrogen's a two positive. All of that comes from the rules on your unit pack cover for assigning ox oxidation numbers. Excuse me. So that was balancing redox uh, rule number one, or uh, direction number one. Then it says circle those that change. So my nitrogen goes from a five positive to a two positive, so that changes. And my copper goes from a zero to a two positive, so those are changing. Number two in the steps is locate the element that's oxidized and draw a connecting line above the reaction. And then number three is for the reduction. I actually like to start with the reduction first. I think that's easier to identify. So nitrogen is going from a five positive to a two positive. That is a reduction. So I write RED for reduction. That's a gain of electrons. And how many electrons is that? That's three electrons. So I do that. Then I do the oxidation. Oxidation is a loss of electrons. So we are going from zero to two positive to become more positive. You must lose some negative charges. So I write oxidation, lose, and how many electrons is that? They would have to lose two electrons. Pause the video, take a look at that, see if you understand what I'm talking about before you move on any further. Direction number four says fill in the boxes. So what was oxidized? Well, this copper right here was oxidized. What was the element that was reduced? Well, nitrogen right here was reduced. So nitrogen was reduced. This is the element that's oxidized. This caused it to be uh, oxidized. So that is the oxidizing agent. Uh, oxidizing agents, reducing agents we've covered in an earlier video. And the reducing agent, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. This substance was reduced. This nitrogen actually was reduced. This caused it to become reduced. So copper is the reducing agent. Pause the video. Make sure you understand what's going on um, with that information. All right, I'm going to clear this up a little bit. So I identified what's oxidized, so this was being oxidized, this is being reduced, and I write the half reactions for this next chunk right here, oxidation, half reaction. So now I am on to five, and uh, I'm going to be on to six really quick. So my oxidation half reaction is Cu arrow going to Cu2 positive. I'm going to go down into six right now. And it says balance all elements other than hydrogen and oxygen by writing in a coefficient. Well, I have one copper on each side, so I'm balanced. B, balance oxygens by adding water. There's no oxygen, so I don't have to do that. Balance hydrogens by adding hydrogen ions. I don't need to do that. Balance the charge. This is 6D. Balance the charge by adding negative electrons to the side that's more positive. Well, this copper over here has zero for a net charge. This copper right here has got a two positive. So if I add two electrons, both sides now have a net charge of zero. And I have 
finished with that particular problem. Next, I'm going to go to the reduction half reaction, and that's going to be NO3, 1 minus, going to NO. I go back up to 6A, balance all elements besides hydrogen and oxygen. That's done. 6B, balance the oxygens by adding water to the side that needs more oxygens. So I have three oxygens here, I have one oxygen here. So I add two H2Os to bring the number of oxygens on each side to the same amount. Pause this, see if you understand what I'm talking about, and then start the video up again. 6C, add hydrogen by adding hydrogen ions to the side that needs more hydrogen ions. Here I have four hydrogens. This side I don't have any hydrogen, so I'm going to add some hydrogen ions over on this side. And this side has four H's, so I'm going to put four H's on this side to balance it out. Now I go to D. Balance the charge by adding electrons to the side that's more positive. Okay, so I'm going to start over here with H2O. There's no charge there, so that's zero. Nitrogen monoxide, no charge there. NO3, I have a negative one charge right there, so it's a negative one for the NO3, and I have four hydrogen ions. So that's four of these positive charges. So I have four positive, one negative, that all adds up to a three positive. So I'd have to add three electrons to this side. So three electrons to this side to balance it out. Now we go on to number seven. The electrons gained and lost should end up matching the electrons in the brackets by the oxidation numbers. So if we went back up to our brackets, we would see that copper lost two electrons, and we would see that nitrogen had to gain three electrons. So we would see that this matched what we had up above. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit over here. So we got three electrons plus four hydrogen ions. Number eight, multiply one or both half reactions by a whole number such that the same number of electrons lost in the oxidation equal the number of electrons gained in the reduction. So I have three electrons there. I have two electrons there. I need to make those the same number of electrons. So I multiply this top one by three. Multiply everything by three. So that would be three coppers and three copper ions. And I cross that two out and I make that a six. Six electrons. In this bottom one, I have to multiply that by two to get to the same number of electrons. So now I have six electrons. I have eight hydrogen ions. I have two nitrate ions. I have two nitrogen monoxides, and I have four H2Os. Number nine, equivalent items are added if they're on the same side of the arrow and subtracted if on opposite sides. So what that means is I have eight hydrogens right here, and I don't have any hydrogens on the other side, so I guess that's all a moot point. The only thing that would cancel out are these six electrons right there, and the six electrons right there. So I go ahead and I can fill in my chart. I have how many hydrogens on this side? I have eight. That's where that comes from. How many coppers? I have three. How many nitrates? I have two. How many copper ions do I have? I have three. How many nitrogen monoxides do I have? I have two. And how many waters do I have? I have four. Now that is correctly balanced. Take a minute or two, look at that, and then we'll continue on to the next problem. So before I go over this next problem, you should follow the directions on your unit pack cover and see what you can get done, and then only play up to the parts where you uh, have some work done, check your answers, and see how it goes. So I'm going to start with oxidation numbers. So hydrogen's a one positive, but there's two of them. So the sulfur has to be a two negative. Oxygen's a two negative, hydrogen's a one positive, so that's six negative, this is one positive, so that gives me a five negative, so nitrogen would have to be a five positive. 
Oxygen's a two negative. Hydrogen's a one positive. So this is eight negative. This is two positive. So that is six negative. So sulfur would have to be a six positive. Oxygen's a two negative. There's two of them, so that's four negative. So nitrogen would have to be a four positive. Put that up there. Two negative, one positive. First thing is we identify what element is reduced. So which one is reduced in oxidation number? And the nitrogens, we are going from a five positive to a four positive. So that's a reduction and that's a gain. And that's one electron. And we have sulfur going from a two negative to a six positive, so that's an oxidation, loss, and how many electrons? Well, we have six positive here and two negative, so that's eight electrons, so that's a lot of them. This electron number should be equal to what we have down here. This electron number should be equal to what we have over here when we're all done. Well, the reason I point that out to you is because I'm going to erase all this right now, and we'll see what happens in the end. So what's my oxidized element? We have sulfur. What's our reduced element? That was nitrogen. This nitrogen was reduced, so what caused it? This caused it, so that would be my reducing agent. This was oxidized, what caused it? This caused it, so that would be my oxidizing agent. Filling those in again, nothing new there. All right, oxidation half reaction. So we have H2S going over to H2SO4. Again, you should be following the directions and seeing what you can figure out on your own, and then watching what I do to see if I am, uh, if you are doing the similar things. So first thing is I wrote the oxidation numbers, did all that. I wrote what's oxidized, what's reduced. So I am down to number five. So I write that in. Number six, balance all the elements besides hydrogen and oxygen. Done. Six B, add oxygen to the side that needs more oxygen. So to add oxygen, I add H2O. And I have four oxygens over here, so I put four H2Os on that side. Now I'm on six C, add hydrogen ions to the side that needs more hydrogen. Here I have eight hydrogens, nine, ten hydrogens. Over here I have two hydrogens, so I need to add eight hydrogen ions to this side. Now I'm on 6D, balance the charge by adding electrons to the side that's more positive. No charge there, no charge there, no charge there. Here I have eight positive ions, so to balance it out I add eight electrons. And if you can see, when we did this up here, we had eight electrons as our number. So that's a nice double check. Now we're going to go ahead and do the reduction half reaction. So we are going to go from HNO3 over to NO2. I go to 6A, balance everything besides hydrogen and oxygen. Done with that. 6B, balance oxygen by adding water to the side that needs more oxygen. So I'm going to add one H2O over onto this side. 6C, add uh, hydrogen ions to the side that needs more hydrogen ions. Here I have two hydrogens. Here I have one, so I'm going to add one hydrogen ion over here. And then balance the charges out by adding electrons to the side that's more positive. Zero, zero, zero one electron, and then I have to multiply this one by eight to get the electrons to be the same. So I'm going to get eight electrons, eight hydrogen ions, eight of those, eight of those, eight of those. These eight hydrogens cancel out with these eight hydrogens. These eight electrons cancel out with these eight electrons. Uh, four waters are here, those get canceled out and we reduce this number down to four. And then we can fill in our numbers down here, it's kind of ugly, but we get a one, we're going to get an eight, 
We're going to get a 1, we're going to get an 8, and we're going to get a 4.